We'll go to Zach in New York. Um, believes in God hey. and free will. Pronouns hey. are he, him. Believes in God and free will, and those things are related. How you doing, Zach? I'm doing good. How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing all right. What's up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, so uh, I, I guess, yeah, I kind of left it vague from what I mentioned I wanted to talk about, but uh, I think, and interestingly enough, like, uh, just to give a brief backstory, um, I, I used to be a huge follower of Sam Harris. I'm, probably you guys are familiar with his work, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so he, you know, he talks about free will and all that kind of stuff. But I would say uh, more recently, I've I've kind of I think realized that I think a lot of the theological debate hinges on the question of a metaphysical concept like free will, as an example. I mean, there are other ones like numbers, et cetera. But I guess what what, what I want to talk about is that um, I think from an atheistic standpoint that it's very difficult to conclude any form of truth being uh, ha- having any legitimate grounding without a faith-based claim. So of course the question is faith in what, right? But I think there's certain theological distinctions, let's say, within Christianity, specifically like Orthodox Christianity, which I think accounts for those um, distinctions that would make the concept of truth possible. So while I think, you know, I think you mentioned before that a lot of Christians usually use like more personal stories that come to their conclusions, but I would say I'm the exact opposite. Like I grew up uh, very secular. To be honest, I used to make fun of religious people. I thought it was silly, you know, like, but I think I've come to realize that there are a lot of as equally as many problems as actually not more problems in the atheistic perspective and worldview um, than even in the, the than in any theological worldview. So I just want to your opinions are on that, and then obviously, yeah. Zach, I agree with you that there are Christian attempts at making truth grounded in something better than what an atheist can do, right? I agree that there are attempts in making that possible all the way. I mean, you can talk about Augustine, you can talk about Aquinas. I mean, there's a lot of these uh, Christian philosophers that have really tried to, to g- ground the work yeah. in, yeah, who, who were inspired by Greek philosophy, to be to be fair, uh, in, in making this sort of, tr- these truth claims about the world work in relation to the existence of God. I, I am personally not convinced that that gap has been bridged. Um, and for the same reason why you might have critique of postmodern ideas of why we can't have truth because all of our groundings fail in some way or another. Um, the, the problem with an idea like truth is, of course, it's been defined in multi, multiple different ways and there's completely different methodologies on how to attain it. And um, everything from the Gettier problem onwards, you're going to find issues in having just the very groundwork and basis of, of how to have, you know, justified true belief as one person has called it but uh but i mean there's no real way around it i think anybody who's ever attempted this be it christian be it atheist be it hindu whatever have trying to figure out what is this objective idea of truth that we can all agree on that we can all agree on the method to i i don't think anybody's ever been able to do it now that doesn't mean that uh, we I, can't do it or that we on that you do you agree or disagree when sorry i it, couldn't hear you i totally do agree that Okay. Every faith has made attempts to, and none have done it in a conclusive fashion that everybody yeah. would agree to. I completely agree. But I mean, I yeah. would say, just, I guess, to push back a little bit. Uh, first off, I think the the birth of, uh, you know, uh, the Christian influence that came from some, some influence of, like, Hellenistic philosophy doesn't yeah. mean that it's, like, synonymous or that it's uh, congruent with it. Like, if, for example, in Orthodox faith, uh, Manathos or a lot of the Greek thinkers that are now Orthodox Specifically, you know, they were birthed out of the Hellenistic Greek philosophy. It's still in Greece. And sure. they believe there are distinctions which really sever the two worldviews, like whether it be That's fair. presuppositions, which one would reject. So I'm just well, saying, let me— and yeah, let me be clear. I don't when I when I reference the Hellenistic origins of a lot of Christian philosophy, that's not my attempt to invalidate it, but just show that there is origins. Like I'm I'm specific yeah. I'm thinking specifically how like there's a lot of Neoplatonism in in Christianity that I mean literally comes from Plato, there's right? A, like that's how that you know that kind of thing. There's a large. Sorry, I I don't mean to cut you off. I just yeah, but I, I got I, you there. There definitely is a large. What's that? Well, let's let's can, can we let's let's pin it down here. What what convinced you okay. that Christianity has it right, or the Christian methodology of discovering truth? is is better than yeah. or is more successful in that project than any other endeavor because i am curious about that yeah and I, so that's, that's kind of all i was going to add so yeah. yes yeah. go ahead that'd be great 
Okay. Yep. So I would say that I, uh, given um, the, I, I mean, I, the, depending on how you, how you want to describe it, but given metaphysical assumptions of an atheistic worldview, basically that, or a materialistic worldview, I know those are not synonymous. You can be an atheist and be an idealist or other forms. There are certain gaps and limitations on what you can prove and know for, for as, as fact or truth. So I think that what Christianity does is it actually makes, a, as, as we saw, already established, a leap of faith, which means belief without material evidence, which I would concede that. There's, there's no way to prove this that we all can agree because it is based on faith. That it would make the whole worldview is based off of a leap of faith in a, in a belief that God, a form of God that was, in this case, inspired and instantiated in, in human form in Jesus Christ in this case, um, redeems us, our soul and all, all the metaphysical all the metaphysical presuppositions that are included in that worldview through the form of your own free will. So that the entire faith hinges on the fact, like, let's say, why, why does evil exist? Well, all, the, all these questions that exist both in theistic and atheistic philosophy, you know, there's different answers to it. But in, the, in theism, these questions are answered because humans have free will. So I don't, to go back to the other point, um, I don't believe that everyone will agree on these things. Actually, in Christian theology, it's very, very clear that most people won't agree the world will hate you for your beliefs like that's that's a big part of why you know how, how jesus was sacrificed i mean there's a lot mm-hmm. of uh mm-hmm. cultural yeah. anthropology to show that it's not like the whole world's going to agree to these things i think it's a misnomer to believe that everyone will agree to quote unquote a truth which under an atheistic framework has no grounding and to your question why do i believe that you know uh christianity solves these problems mm-hmm. because it posits a faith-based a, a, a faith-based well, claim of something like free will and other ideals which we can get to which can interesting for free will and action and thereby truth by logical you know syllogism by you know by definition so, so many things to break down there I, I i want to respond but j mike's just itching he he's itching i he have wants to go. i have a lot but, there's a lot because uh, trying to think how i how i parse parse it out because my first disagreement was or at least wanting more of a clarification on what you mean by faith because that's going to matter a lot but okay because the way i'm the way i'm looking at faith is I hold the belief in some proposition. I believe the proposition is true, and I'm really confident that it's true. Abs- it, you know, justification be damned. It doesn't. It doesn't require justification. I just need absolute confidence that the proposition is true. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, vaguely, I, I think it. I think that's over overdefining it. I think it's just belief without material evidence. I think you he's can talking about Soren Kierkegaard, J. Mike. He's talking about you know just yeah. the ex, ex, Christian existential. Just believe it because you can. I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess I might. Be, I might be a little too. I might yeah. be too pedantic on it, but it does matter because the way, and like you said, from different backgrounds, and this is where my background is going to matter because the way I, the way that I look at a belief is an attitude or a commitment towards a proposition, okay? What I mean by that is like, it's raining outside and I have a commitment to that proposition. Well, I can, I can commit to that it being true, I can commit to it being false, or I can commit that I just don't know, right? Um, and so it seems that if I have a belief in a proposition, like Jesus died for my sins, then I have an attitude towards that proposition or a commitment. And then in your case, it's gonna be that it's true. and um, the way that I'm separating or going further with faith, all I'm adding, the only salt and pepper I'm adding is just that you really, really think it's true, right? You're really confident in it, right? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing what believe, part of that I, would, I would be, it would be an it. issue. I would say I have faith in it. I mean, I, I, belief is a difficult word. I mean, because if you, in Christian theology- well, well, we can, Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry to cut you off, Zach. Sorry to cut you off, but we can't, if you're trying to understand what moral non-cognitivism is, and I say, well, it's some cognitive non-cognitivism about morality, I didn't really help you define anything because I'm using the term, which we're trying to, to understand the analytic notion of faith. So we can't use the, the term, right? That's not going to like elucidate anything. It's not going to illuminate anything for me or, or the audience. So what I'm asking is I've given the definition, which is that we have a belief in a proposition and we really think it's true. What would be the issue with that so far? Um, because I don't always believe it's true. I mean, I, I, I think, I think it's the misnomer that if someone believes something, there's never moments of doubt. And I think that's what I think it lacks in its definition is what I'm trying oh, to Oh, well, so, I mean, I could probably grant that, you know, you wake up one day and you're, you're not as sure or as confident, but you're just going to define yeah. it as, as this, you know, today I have this extreme confidence in that the belief is true. So what, the reason why that matters to me, if we agree on those terms is that it just seems like you've conceded 
there's no the justification isn't required. That's all you need. Belief, thinking the proposition is true and really thinking it's true. And so why I'm having this issue with the comparison side to like the atheist worldview, which I don't even know what that really is. Um, and, and you and you made a good point. You said you don't, have, you don't. No, I know you said you don't have to be a materialist or a physicalist, which I don't define myself as a physicalist necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe a non-reductive physicalist or something. But um, but point being is that if I actually or if you have this definition of faith and then you are kind of imposing it on to, to me or that I have to make that. I don't know that my claim is that I don't know that I do that beyond the base axioms that I set, right? And the axioms are clearly going to be, they're just what it means to be an, uh, an axiom is that it's not going to be like justified, right? It's going to be some base set that you start with. And so I am going to disagree with you that I'm making any, any secondary step of faith like you would be, because what I'm going to do is at least confer to some data um, or at least make an attempt. Whether I'm wrong is one thing, but I'm, I'm actually, in my example, if you were to call it that I'm using faith, I'm saying I have a component of the belief. I think it's true, but what really prompts me thinking it's true is something justificatory, something that actually does the the job of trying to justify that belief being true. Do you see my point? My point well, is, is so that you don't even have to offer justification. So, yeah. Yeah. No, no. So I, I mean, I think to elaborate on that is I think you're just, you're uh, uh, using the word justification as to be tantamount to like material evidence. In this case, as what you said, because you justify it through actual no, data. A priori, a priori deductive argument would be fine. Okay, so then right. if, let's use, so let's use an a priori deductive argument. So if I were to say this, if I were to say that if there's no free will, or let, let's just I think I, there's a few ways to kind of go down this thinking, but let's say that if there's no uh, metaphysical aspect of of the human nature, and that people are are simply byproducts of the, so you're saying. Hello. So no, I was listening to you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, sorry. You're yeah, here. Sorry. I, I think it cut out for a second. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was <laughs> saying. Um, so if if we were to basically take the modern, I think, scientific approach, right? Just as an example, I'm not saying that you believe that, but that people are simply mechanistic processes of like chemistry, biology, and physics, and that uh -huh. their 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 thought patterns, etc., are that there's no free will and there's just mechanistic processes. Then by deductive reasoning, as, as you already alluded to. There's no mechanism by which we can conclude any true statement because it's just following mechanistic processes. Even if you throw a random element of chance involved at the quantum level or whatever level you want to call it, there's no scientific or evidence base, as you used to say, component of uh, of evidence that would prove a, any form of free will. Free will is a subjective experience that you have to have faith in, in my approximation. So I'm saying, uh, okay, as you alluded to, if yeah, you want to use a, a deductive yeah, yeah. argument, that could be, I think, a very strong one to prove that you would need reason, a faith-based claim of free will to conclude any form of truth. I think it's, not, well, it's, it's not. It's not going to be strong because I can be an atheist, and what I and this isn't necessarily my view, but what I could tell you is that I account for free will, and what it is is that what it means for an agent to have free will is that they have intentional states, and what it means to have intentional states means necessarily that I can be in accord with getting ice cream, or I can go to the ice cream store and fail, and they're gonna they're gonna bake in. I, I have faith friends that are atheists, and they're going to say that the, the whole concept of agency is going to be laden with the ability to choose. Otherwise, like you wouldn't, it would, it would be vacuous to say that there's agency because you couldn't be in or out of accord with something. You're just like a causal disposition. You're just like a law that's just going. There are people that do hold that view. Now, I don't agree with your assessment and, and the argument. I'd have to see it in the premises to see where I think it goes wrong. Uh, necessarily but also it doesn't exclude somebody else in some view that does account for agency because what you're saying is that free will like what your statement seems to be is a biconditional statement which is that free will can exist if and only if the christian god exists or this god you believe in exists no that's but not that... actually what i'm saying i'm saying okay. that based on the logical syllogism it's likely and i have faith in the christian god without evidence because i can't have evidence but I have faith in it because it seems to account for problems which are unsolvable in any other context that I know of. I'm not saying that other faiths can't account for this. I'm saying, given my limited perspective um, and my own rational thinking process and what I know, because I'm not, I'm not God, I'm subjective, right? I'm limited in my place and time, what I know, et cetera. I have yeah. faith in it. And I can't prove this to you in a way that we both can agree because it is based on faith. I can see that. And if that if that's, you, 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 you would agree that will. the, you would agree that the agent, that the agent's attitude towards the proposition has nothing to do whether or not the proposition is true. So for example, if it's raining outside and I came to a free choice that it was raining outside, 
it just doesn't matter if, if I was determined to come to the answer that it, that it's raining outside. The state of affairs is that it's raining outside. So I don't really like if you want to like I'm not claiming appeal, that appeal to like the so fact that someone that. wouldn't be able to that that's understandable in a sense that like you would point out like, hey, you can't really make. These, but that just kind of begs not really begs the question, but it seems to like tell the determinist what they are already granting by being a determinist. Right. They're already saying that. Yeah, I mean, I am literally just going through these motions. Uh, and that's fine. But regardless, but Jesus, so, Jesus, Jesus didn't resurrect regardless of whether or not I was a determined meat machine. It, that would just, I don't really see the force there, but well, I, mean, I do want to get, I, I do want to let Dan get back on I too. So. Go ahead, Zach, you finish your thought. Of course. Uh, okay. Yeah, of course. And I don't mean to be combative. Like I, I think I, I get where oh, you guys are coming from. And to be honest, I mean, I, you maybe can tell where I, I, as I mentioned, like I, I used to be a huge proponent of uh, secular thinking and all that, so I I, I get the, the 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 angle. But what I'm like kind of just trying to hammer home is there is no evidence of free will. There's no evidence that you and I can agree to. Like by the same token, you said like what? How can we come to a conclusion that we agree to this and we have evidence that's irrefutable? There is no. If you, if you look in science, for example, the scientific evidence shows that there's no. I'm not saying it's conclusive, but the evidence points towards the idea that there isn't free will because there's no physical process which accounts for will acting uh, that's not caused by a causal physical process right so my point is there is no evidence of free will so do we reject things that we don't have physical evidence for in this case i would say that that would it's it's, it's an aura really, right? it it, no but it seems it seems like easier than that it. it just seems easier than that right i can choose to end the call or not i'm not saying i'm going to do that i can choose to end the call or choose not to end the call and when i do choose to end the call we can ask the question uh, what explains why J. Mike decided to choose A over B, which is to end the call, but right? And when we answer in your brain, but you didn't. Well, well no, I, no, it's not even that. I'm not. I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm not saying. I'm not even going. I'm not even going there. All I'm saying is that we will appeal to what is there an explanation or is there not an explanation? If you say yes, there's an explanation, right? Um, then okay. Then we. What does it mean for there to be an explanation? It means that there's a prior trail of things that explain some phenomena, right? And you can just ask like a child, like, why? Why did that happen? Why did this happen? And what we'll see in virtue of explanations is that there are external trails that prompt those things, right? So it's going to be really hard to fit the free will in there. And then in the other case where you just say it's random, nothing explains why J. Mike actually made that decision. Well, then we just have randomness. I don't really know where you fit free will in there either. So you don't need like, from my perspective, you don't need some argument about like material stuff. You can just propose the issue in virtue of what, if you say that there's an explanation for why I chose this, how do you divorce that from a whole trail of explanations? How do you use volition somewhere sneak in to this entire trail of explanations when what it means to be an explanation is to be backed up by some other antecedent prior thing that gives way to that thing, especially if you're someone that believes in the PSR, I, right? Like the principle of sufficient reason, so, so especially get, if you believe in something like that. But sorry, so, I, I'm talking I, over I, Dan. I, I need to mute my mic. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Zach. No I mean, and, I, I'm talking a lot too. If you want to say something too, you can you can say. I mean, I've, I've been talking as well, so or, or should I jump in? Well, you know, I, I'm thinking a lot about this because, um, you know, I'm going back to Kierkegaard, Zach. I, I was a huge fan of Kierkegaard. I mean, when I was deconstructing my faith as a Christian, he was my number one Christian philosopher. I love Kierkegaard. He has these incredibly mm -hmm. dense works that are like 400 pages long with, yeah. with ridiculous titles. It's it's insane. This this guy was crazy, but he was awesome. He just wrote these, these crazy long things. And I, and I think if more Christians read... Kierkegaard, they'd be more interesting people. I don't know. I I I just think that's true. But like uh, when I this concept of we're we're kind of talking about two different things here almost with this free will and and the existence of God and the belief in Christianity, almost three things there, I guess. But it's like I I see how you're synthetically kind of putting these two things together. But I'm more interested, I guess, in this idea that material we 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 have to believe or we, we choose to believe, if you believe in the free will, we choose to believe despite that of material evidence. That, I mean, that's a fascinating proposition mm. because that's, that's exactly what I thought yeah, yeah. in the same sort of sense. Um, it's it's okay. it's almost w wondrous in a way. You know, there's this kind of um, phenomenology to it that kind of um, like enjoys the, the, the human experience over all else. It's to say that, yeah, it's our personal connection with God that's most meaningful in a sense like and that it very much appeals to me in you know in a what i would call in a secular sense a spiritual way you know what 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 could be uh produced by the human spirit but but to to say that to go that far and to say like this is 
this is what I privilege the most is this experience um, more so than any other kind of reasoning, any other kind of evidence, whatever. I mean, I, it, in some ways it completely ignores the exact claims that Christianity does in fact make, which I do believe are material in nature. Um, no, I, I don't actually, just to clarify, I, I think at your point, yeah. I think it's, you think it's mm -hmm. kind of off, off on a, a separate trail from the central claims. Yeah. I think the, the, the depth to the, the, a lot like a Christian philosophy has, has many layers yeah. of depth. And I think interacting at which layer is kind of depends on which part of the journey you're on. So if someone's yeah. struggling with certain theological assumptions, starting with the resurrection isn't the proper place to start. So I would say that I don't negate those other things. I just that this is where I think we have a disagreement. I think, of course, we have disagreement there, but it is be much more talking past each other than on this point. I think we can kind of iron out some more theological specific arguments. And just to, just to go back as well, again, another point is I don't just view this as, as pivotal on free will. I think that's the most critical one, but I would say that it other, works on other objects like numbers or metaphysical ideals. I mean, I think that there are plenty of other uh, mm -hmm. uh, ways to explain what I'm trying to say, but I just think it's the most tangible. Um, and I think it's, again, it's essential to the theistic, I see that. especially the Christian framework, is that free will is, is the essential claim, like the God of free will. This is what the I mean, it's 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 essential to the to the history and the faith. Is what I'm I, I I I I do think it's a it's a critical point of contention within the Christian philosophical tradition, right? This discussion of free will and the discussion of these you know the philosophical yeah. objects, yeah. as you put it. Um, but like, I I do think it does distract from the fact because you you actually explicitly said the resurrection is not um you know what's being talked about here and, and i i think that's incredible that you say that because how how different that is from the christian tradition that i grew up in in almost every way well, right it's like I, I, this is, i'm not a protestant or a catholic i would say that sure, i assume sure. you grew up in the protestant faith i would assume sure but uh yeah i did i did but you know if if we didn't have that yeah, jesus story if if that's if the gospel stories or any of the New Testament like wasn't even there, we wouldn't even be having this discussion right now. You know what I'm saying? It's like we could still have these uh, con like so talks about philosophy and and and, right. well, uh, and what God, what a, what a, what a, Zach, what a what a what a concept of God could be, what a, what He allows for this world, what exists in possible worlds, what what could exist as free will and stuff. That could all this whole conversation could happen whether or not Christianity exists or not, whether it's true or not. And that's what's really fascinating to me. And that's why I don't think it actually contributes to Christianity at all in that sense. Yeah, it seems because, like, sorry, yeah. Dan. I was no, saying, it I, seems I, like I, you could it. ask yeah. somebody or Zach, whenever you became a believer, if we had you today talk to Zach then, and then you gave him this thing, would, would the former Zach who believed in Christ or, or whatever, whatever it is you believe in, mm -hmm. like, would he not look at you like, that's has nothing to do with why I accepted, right? That Jesus exists or, or died on the cross. But yeah. so at Dan's point, all these points could be made if you had just bought into some other religion and they could be true. You could have some a priori deductive argument to show, um, you know, what, whatever you want there. But I don't, I don't really see like how it re references to what you actually believe or if it, and I could be wrong, but I'm not really convinced that you came to the belief in these things for this reason it sounds like to me like theory crafting after the fact right that's just what it sounds like to well, me why i mean i could be wrong. that i mean i'm giving you logical uh, I'm, i i just don't understand why you make that assumption so i mean i can give you the reason well, well, why you, you, you can how about well, you can you can tell me you can tell me if have, you can tell me if I, sure but you can tell me if i'm wrong did these arguments convince okay. you that jesus died on the cross Yes, by logical extrapolation. Yes, ultimately. So, so, yes. so I mean, it someone, someone, okay, let, let me with definitive proof. No, but I already conceded that in the beginning of the. Of the but so, someone uh, came up to you, and you, 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 someone came up to you, and they, they had this proposition that you were uh, inquiring about, and you hadn't determined your attitude or commitment yet, which is that it's true or false, and then this person came up to you, or a group of people, or a book, or whatever you read presents this argument and then you conclude that Jesus rose or did you conclude that prior? That's the question. No, it, it, the honest answer it took many years of thinking and understanding that there has to be certain presuppositions that you follow through their logical conclusion. And that, yes, I understand that it seems under a modern secular framework, very unlikely that a man could rise from the dead, which defeats all forms of material and scientific knowledge. So I understand that's not, completely against our general sense of the world. 
if you're asking, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not disputing that, Zach. Zach, I'm not disputing that. I'm disputing. So what, what, what's the question? Maybe I, maybe I'm not gathering yeah. exactly what's your question. When, when you, when before you accepted the proposition to be true that Jesus rose from the dead, before that happened, right? Okay. Okay. Did someone come up to you, give that argument, and then you accepted Jesus, or did you accept Jesus and then the argument was presented to you? The honest answer, I would like to say I accepted Jesus. I think that's a Christian thing to do. But my honest answer is I'm, I'm a logical uh, thinker in, in my approximation. I, I, the honest answer is I heard the arguments, realized that I had no account for my own basis of truth or free will or numbers or any form of, of knowing. And then I had to really do some years of introspection to really realize through logical insight that – and not just logic. Okay. That logic is Fair. A useful Fair. Tool, so, but it's not was, everything. So I, it took so, me. So the, the answer is I accept the logical argument, even though I would say from the right Christian answer would be to accept Jesus first, but I didn't. So I mean that's okay. That's, let's that's, let's that's that's, that's fine. We're we're, we're, we're gonna we're that's fine. And and I'm not you're I'm gonna have to take your word for it. I'm not gonna say you're, you're false, or that it's that it's not I mean, true I'll be or very, something. But very honest here, as much as I can, I think it seems. No, like that's, it knows, but that's no, yeah, no, that's that's fair. I'm not gonna contest that, but. It is. It's not like I was presented an a priori deductive argument where the conclusion is that Jesus rose from the dead, which is what I'm interested in. I'm well, not interested I, I can in give like you that, but it would take a longer time than like than we'd have here to get to that point. I can give you one that's more that's framed fair. in terms of what constitutes truth. If, if, if that would do, then you know, it can take. I would just say that it, it's obviously very complicated, and expect that I can give you a three-minute deductive reasoning from truth claim to Jesus rising from the dead is is not simply in the line with the, the that's fine i leave emails open the, jmike at atheist hyphen or atheist hyphen community.org if you um if you want like i'll or if you want to call on any sunday i'll listen to those arguments but it seems like there's like these appeals to how people come to reason and that's fine but what i'm really concerned hmm. with was your reason your reasoning on how you got there you've you've thrown out that nope it wasn't like i one thing it's why it's frustrating is that you said it was on faith, but that's a, just a contradiction to what you're saying now. Because what you're saying now is not it's, – it's not – because now you're saying that there's an a priori deductive argument which serves as justification. And prior, I went yeah, with you I with this whole thing about argument. faith that you agreed with me. It doesn't require the justification. So it just seems a little weird no, that no, we're faith like – no, no, no. So faith, when you say justification, what do you what do you mean by justification? Because I think we have different definitions of justification. There. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm saying like at least an attempt. Like what I'm saying about faith doesn't require even that attempt. It just requires that you believe the proposition to be true. That was the whole, that was the whole like, no, no, notion I that I went through. Faith, well, uh, to be more accurate and, and what I am trying to explain is that I think a proper view of faith is that it's acknowledging where the limits of logic and subjective reasoning get you, and then the delta between that and the truth has to be faith, because the truth is something objective, at least in my approximation. I think this is what the Christian faith posits, and no subjective mind is objective. So the delta or the change or the difference between the subjective mind's reasoning capacity and the truth has to be faith. And I would just say that the where you place the faith is important, and I would say placing it in a framework like Christianity gives a more cohesive worldview – and placing it in subjective frameworks that don't purport these claims of free will, et cetera. So I think that holistically, it's just taking a step back and realizing and reframing what humans are, what free will is, what truth is, in light of the real context of what we can actually know. We can't I mean, know yeah, I mean, just understanding so, what human nature is in some sense. Dan, you go ahead, Dan. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I do think because we're we've only got a couple like yeah. twenty minutes left of this show. I think we gotta take some of the callers after this. So I, I do wanna kinda Okay. Yeah, I so, uh, yeah. guys talk with me and well, yeah, I wanted to yeah, I was gonna yeah. I was gonna move on. I wanted to make well so everybody's got I, last I, point. We, we, all, we all got we, background, so yeah. No, I know I we all you. we all got last points, but just the next time we call in we can we can, you know, go over the argument again or present the argument. I'm just um I'm not really like seeing like I guess my main issue is there's a lot of issues where you're you're just assuming and, things I don't really fully understand really are matter. And then two, that assumes that you have a, a definition of Christianity that's actually the right one that's just going to be disputed in historical I I, 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 I'll tell you explicitly, I don't have the right one. I have faith in my limited, I, it's, I, you know, I, right. so I can, I mean, I guess there's a whole, I, I'm not going to, yeah. I guess that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate I don't, the talk. We can, we can talk next yeah. time if you want right. me to answer those questions, but appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Thanks, Zach. Um, it just seems underdetermined but, by any other thing I could say. 
Well, you know, this is what's interesting, Jim, Mike, is, again, like, I, I shared a very similar worldview in my Christianity, but at least I can speak for myself. I won't speak on Zach, and I won't do the thing where you talk about the call and, and try to diffuse the argument afterwards. But it's, it's, sure, it's sure. like, I, I talk about from my own experience, I realized I privileged what Christianity could explain more than what it couldn't explain, right? So uh, just as, you know, for reference, why I'm bringing this up, you know, he's saying that, Oh, well, we can account for free will with this framework. We can account for truth with this framework. But at the same token, we also can't account for the events and what the Bible depicts or what uh, like the actual changes and our claims about the world and how it's been made based on what the Bible is. So, so there is an obvious weakness there. It's just trading in some some weaknesses for other ones, really. I mean, the the the. The strength of a secular worldview, the strength of, of a materialist worldview, if you aspire to that, is that we don't have to explain the events that take place in the Bible or the claims that people have made that are religious or numinous in nature. We just say that they aren't true or <laughs> that we don't have enough evidence to justify them yet. Uh, we don't have to kind of have this this extra burden of taking in the this whole thing with us because – like to just accept Christianity at uh, face value with saying, oh, what it explains this other stuff. I mean, that's not sufficient enough for me to yeah. take that into account but and, and take it as 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 a true thing. Right. Like there's so many questions I'd have to have answered before I could get to that point. But, um, yeah. I, it, you know, we, we all have issues with our methodologies and how we come to truth. Like we, we, we were talking about this a little bit before the show, even you and me, Jay, Mike, it's like that we can always figure out better ways of doing it but we i don't think we have to make appeals to leaps of faith in quite that same way like yeah we do make um like leaps for stuff but it's not based on nothing usually it's it is based on like i i i do have quote unquote faith that the sun is going to rise tomorrow but that's based on observational evidence that's that that's not based on just a hunch that's based on stuff that we can look at previously and, and predict for the future right so i don't know there's a lot there's a that's, lot to break down in the conversation yeah. and that's my that's my exact distinction is yeah. something like the sun there i'm actually attempting a data set at which to have a justification for yeah. what i'm saying with faith is you don't you don't need that and then so it just seems yeah. strange to apply an argument which doesn't require it you just need faith right that's where the conversation stops yeah and when you well, say faith you, you're, you're done you can't bring me down with you and say that that's what i use now I'm sorry. If you're yeah. saying that the best explanation is the kid with the super soaker, I'm sorry. I'm not taking it on faith that it rained. I have a prior data set and I have no data set of kids running around with super soaker, soaker spraying every inch of the neighborhood yeah. down until it's all wet and looks yeah. like that. In so, other words, I can't privilege the Christian tradition over any other tradition yeah. in that respect, right? Until again, we I can, have something to confer to. We can have, again, the entire philosophical debate without having Christianity have anything to do with it, really. And okay. you can Precisely. still you know that's yeah 